No, it doesn't say that. Go back and read it. Uh, but anyway, this is this is the mind frame of a lot of people. And if the and if the and if the leaders are doing it, if the pastors are doing it, then you know the congregation's doing it. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you this here again from the Bible. I, this Bible has every answer to every issue of life. And most most people who sit in churches only relegate it to an to a single issue of eternal life in that they, they want to live how they want to and yet they want to breeze on into heaven when it's all said and done and take the easy route. And that's not how it is. This Bible addresses every single issue that we face in life. Everything that we deal with, this Bible has something to say about it. And so here we have a poll. This, again, this doesn't surprise me. 40%, that's almost half of the evangelical leaders say they socially drink alcohol according to a new monthly poll. Now if they socially drink it, more than likely that means they keep it in their house and every now and then you can expect that some of these guys are going to go home and just get totally busted up. Okay, that's what it is. Many of them added that they only drink in moderation, on special occasion, or infrequently. I think they're lying. And they noted that they do so only with those who share similar views, views on alcoholic consumption. The poll released Thursday was based on responses from the board of directors of the National Association of Evangelicals, which we are not a member of. Uh, including this, They wouldn't have us on a bed, anyway. Including the CEOs of denominations and representatives of a broad array of evangelical organizations among the majority who said that they did not, did not consume alcohol, alcohol among the majority who said they did not consume alcohol the common reason for abstinence was not because they believe it is sinful to drink uh, even though there is no prohibition on the moderate alcohol consumption in scripture due to the many implications as in, and as, as an example to family and those I serve I like Paul's words it is better not to Hmm. said Gary Benedict, the president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, according to the NAE poll. Folks, we are in trouble. And I'm going to show you this from the scriptures, Leviticus chapter 10, because I'm, I'm not just going to believe that... And, and, and let, me, let me get to this. Let me, let me tell you how this works. There are sitting in our churches all across this country people who want to drink because they like it, because some people have a problem with it. Uh, they just want to drink, and they're looking for an excuse. They're looking for a reason. So all they need, and they've been taught from birth that it's wrong to drink alcohol. And if it's not wrong, then why won't we let kids in this country drink alcohol? And so it's wrong. Um, but, and I'm going to show you from the Bible that it's wrong. But there are people in our churches sitting there saying, man, I wish I could drink, I wish I could drink. And they're probably doing it in the closet behind the scenes where they won't get caught. In fact, I know they are. I've seen people do it. But I will tell you that all it takes is one word from a minister, from an from a evangelical leader, from a denominational leader to say, well, you know, the Bible says in moderation, it's not a sin. You know, everybody knows the Bible says that. Come on. Uh, they're, they're just waiting for that. They're waiting for someone to give them biblical approval to do it, and then they're going to go do it. And we are, we, not we, they, they are casting a tremendous stumbling block, both physically and spiritually, in the way of people, and they're going to cause, they are causing the doom and the destruction. I want you to remember this. Who would be in charge of alcohol? What spirit in the Bible would be in charge of alcohol? The Bible says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. So we have two spirits here. We have the Holy Spirit of God, which is the exact opposite of drunkenness. We have Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, who happens to have, she just happens to have a wine glass in her hand. Okay? I mean, that's, every time you see her, she's got a glass in her hand. And she has a wine glass in her hand, and she has made the nations of the earth drunk with the wine of her fornication. That's who she is. So what spirit now is leading all these people against the word of God to go say, that's okay if I drink in moderate, <coughs> drink in moderate, and they can't even say the word because they're so drunk. Here's what the Bible says, Leviticus 10. Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. God was serious about this thing. It shall be a statute for how long? Forever, throughout your generations. Now, here, here's why. Here's why God did not want the priest, the Levites, his people. And by the way, we are a nation of priests as Christians. Here's why God said, I don't want you drinking. I never want you to do that. Here's why. 
that you may put difference between holy and unholy. Okay? Now you stop to think about this. The priest's job was to take a look at sacrifices and say, that's a good one. No, you can't send that one in because that will defile the tabernacle of God. We can't have that. That was their job. And so if you're drunk, you won't see the spot. Or you'll say, well, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that one. Okay, and you'll let it in and you'll defy the temple of God. Now get this big picture here because this is exactly where we're moving in this world. Defiling the temple, which is the body, uh, with a mark of the beast. And so here it is. God said, don't do it. You will not be able to know the difference between holy and unholy. So we have churches all across this country that are embracing, embracing by their silence on the issues of life, embracing sodomy, embracing fornication, that is, uh, adulterous relationships or people that live together without matrimony, without marriage, they're embracing those things by their silence on them. They won't preach on them. They won't say a word about it. Uh, embracing other issues of life that the Bible specifically addresses is either right or wrong, and they won't touch it, and they, and they can't know the difference because spiritually they're drunk. And spiritually they're drunk? Because physically, in their bodies, in their philosophy, they believe there's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol. That you may put difference between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean. And that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. God said all of the statutes are important. You need to teach them to my people. But if all of our ministers are drinking, God said you won't be able to teach them everything that they need to know. And if they don't know it, they won't obey it. And if they don't obey it, they're doomed. This is what God said. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And, and I notice the language here. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Look at the word deceived here. Because this whole idea of drinking has everything to do with the deception that is creeping into the churches in the last days. Isaiah 28, verse 7. They have also erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred. In other words, they have errors in their doctrine. They have errors in their theology. They have massive, massive errors uh, in their judgment because of strong drink, spiritual and physical. They are swallowed up of wine. You don't swallow wine, preacher. It swallows you. Okay? They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. Okay? This is, he's describing what, judge peop what drunk people do. Um, they can't see straight. This is why they shouldn't be operating heavy equipment, you know, like a car. Uh, they stumble, which means they cannot walk straight. Walking. Get this image of walking in the Bible. Walk, walking on two legs is an amazing thing in the, in the nature that God has created. Uh, for man to be able to walk on two legs is what really separates him from the rest of the whole world of, of his creation is in that we have the ability to walk upright and walk on two legs. Walking is God's way. When you stumble, that is Babylon's way. And so we have these, these pictures that God is drawing for us. They stumble in judgment, which means they can't figure out what to believe. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there's no place clean. Remember what Jesus said. And now we bring this vomit thing back into, the, back into the picture here. Because this idea that when people get drunk, they puke. Okay, that's what happens. And here we have the tables that are full of vomit because the preachers are spewing out this garbage because they drink alcohol and because they are operating under a spirit of drunkenness in their lives and they're spewing out this garbage to people and the only thing worse than a pastor throwing out vomit every Sunday is a church that is just lapping it up. They're just eating this stuff up. This is the condition of the Laodicean church right now is that they're naked and they're drunk. And by the way, the two always go hand in hand. And so I want you to just understand the days that we're living in right now. And it just, when I, I, I didn't really need the article to tell me but it just makes sense now that a lot, a lot, and there's probably a lot of these guys that are lying about it. I mean, how many, how many Christian music artists do we hear that are, that are drinkers, that are alcoholics? How many pastors are we finding out that are alcoholics? How many